This episode is brought to you by the revolutionary Muslim matrimonial site, Half Our Deen, which uses science, not swipes, to help you find the other half. On Half Our Deen, you can learn about their personality, interests, and view up to 158 answers to marriage-related questions so you don't waste time with people that you're not compatible with. With over 2,500 success stories, Half Our Deen has quickly become the number one choice for marriage-minded Muslims. Has marriage gone out of fashion? In this episode, we explore the cross-section of feminism, individualism, and cultural or religious baggage that may address why many women are choosing to stay single now more than ever. Assalamu alaikum, and welcome to another episode on the Remastered Podcast. I'm your host, Munira Madison, and today I'm joined by a very special guest, Farhat Amin, who's joining us from the UK, and we're talking about marriage for all the single ladies out there. How are you doing today, Farhat? Alhamdulillah, I am very well. How are you? Alhamdulillah, so excited to be having this conversation with you today. I think it's so important. Uh, for our listeners who may not be familiar with you, Farhat Amin is an author and host of the podcast, Smart Muslima. She shares life advice via her website, smartmuslima.com, which will inshallah help women achieve confidence in their faith. Her aim is to equip women with practical Islamic solutions to the challenges they face. Many single Muslimas are finding it difficult to get married today. And in her new book, Smart Single Muslima, she explores the ideas that are creating this problem in Muslim communities. This sounds great. I mean, let's jump right in. This is a conversation that comes up over and over again in our community. I'm really interested. Let's start with the culture or landscape that we're in. Uh, what are we talking about? What culture are we in in terms of marriage right now? Well, I think many people would agree that, you know, the premise that we're kind of setting that it is becoming difficult to get married. I think compared to maybe 20 years ago, it does seem to have become more challenging and more difficult for women in particular. I know men also face this, but my research and reading um, and my podcast discussions are really for women. And it's a subject that... Um, unintentionally kept coming up in with the guests that I was speaking to because uh, many of the women are um well actually the majority of the, the ladies I interview are in the UK and US and generally in the west you know right. and um we we were having discussions around gender roles and um feminism the effect of feminism on our thinking and in, in a, not in a um the purpose wasn't to attack feminism, but that, that was actually quite interesting. It was really just to understand how far, you know, as far as women's liberation, how much has that impacted Muslim women living in the West and how much can we take from that and how much should we be aware of, you know, um, is uh, are the ideas that feminism in particular is, is propagating, do they align with our faith? And then, like I said, unintentionally, the subject of marriage came up and how that was becoming quite a challenge for women. So I then thought, okay, let me, a lot of the books that I've read um, were women. And what was coming, or what I found, find, and you know, you can tell me if you agree or not, mm -hmm. is that for non-Muslim women, generally the view that they're coming to is that really marriage is kind of becoming irrelevant now. Mm -hmm. If you want to get married, yeah, that's your choice. If you don't want to, that's okay as well. And there was a very interesting book uh, called All the Single Ladies. And um, actually, yeah, that's it could have actually just been called The Single Ladies, but it was very similar to that Beyonce song. Um, but in that book, what the lady was writing about was that how, as a lifestyle choice, being single is the best thing a woman can do now in the 21st century. It's, mm -hmm. you, you know, the ideas of having to, the responsibilities, you don't need to have them. You have so much agency as far as career, as far as education. Why would you want to get married? And that was her, and I found that really interesting that, the best choice for women that, that was being um, advocated, not only by her, I would say, if we look at, you know, popular culture in general, being single is like the best time of your life. Mm -hmm. And why would you want to be tied down? But, and the when you got married, it was the opposite of, 
being tied down, responsibilities, why would you want to not have the ability to just get up and go whenever you want to? So reading a lot of that, it, I just thought, this is what I'm hearing from a lot of Muslim women as well, that they're aspiring to either delay marriage, that, that was one issue, or when they were choosing to get married, because, you know, it's, it's a sunnah, it's our sunnah to, to get married, they were then finding, well, I can't find someone who's compatible with the lifestyle that I want. Right. And it just, it, it's a very, um, this is an issue that is complicated. It's not a simple, it's very nuanced. And the thing that I noticed was when you went to, whether the discussions in Muslim circles around this subject tended to kind of fall into the camp where either women were blamed for this problem or men are blamed. Um, and there was a lot of anger that that was another thing that if we can't get married it's is it because there aren't there aren't decent men out there there aren't good enough right. Muslim men they're not you know um, stepping up to what it means to be a Muslim man for a Muslim woman and then maybe on the other side men were saying well women have become too they, they are becoming feminist or they're becoming right. too demanding or they don't understand their role as wives mm -hmm. and so I just thought these discussions aren't very fruitful they're not um they're not very sensible and then and it just seems like whatever you're feeling or whatever problem you're having in finding a partner instead of thinking well let's step back and think what does islam say let's first of all calm down right <laughs> we, don't, exactly. we don't need to argue and fight We're, in islam there is no idea of battle of the sexes that there really isn't but we are as non-muslims you know generally are they, there is that kind of battle going on mm -hmm. and then the muslims have decided well we're gonna have a, we're gonna have a big old argument on muslim twitter as well but the net results is that nothing is solved no no one gets no one wins right end. you need a growth mindset not necessarily just complain about the challenges that you're facing mm -hmm. in this landscape and we'll talk we'll touch on the gender roles i think in a little bit but this landscape that you're you're portraying i think that nuance was very important, that in some ways this is coming from individualistic progressive ideals and societal messaging. And in some ways it may be coming from, you know, a experience seeing people in marriages that have failed because people have overcompromised or lied or misrepresented themselves. And so like preparing, like you said, preparing our young brothers and sisters for marriage. How do we ensure that they know when they meet the right person. Um, and that landscape is so confusing right now because you enter in, you know, Muzzmatch, all those different apps, all those different ways to connect. <laughs> so I'd really like to talk a little bit about that. That's something that's come up a lot when we're discussing this landscape uh, to find a partner. What do you feel like, what are all the different variables, I think, that are really making this landscape confusing for our young adults out there? And you know, what do you suggest? Which route do you suggest for people when they're looking at the aunties and the rishtas and the bio data and the muzmatch and the Minder, which is now Salam's app, Facebook dating or like in person? What do you like in your experience? What have you found? Well, it's interesting. Just that whole list you gave but for a person. I'm going to talk about women in particular when they're entering. Let's even before they decide to enter the sphere of thinking so many ideas about marriage that we are being um, exposed to. Yeah. And I think, and that's kind of what, in the book, that's just the first chapter I, I wrote was, is marriage going out of fashion? Or even the way, the concept of marriage in our minds. And when you have so many different voices telling you what marriage is or what a partner what type of partner you should look for what's an ideal um arrangement when it comes to marriage it is confusing and i i'm totally do not blame women or men to uh, for being confused mm -hmm. about the subject of marriage because it's inevitable um you know and i'm not it's not just about social media i think if we generally look at, you know, the influences in our lives, I think that has a big impact on the views we hold about anything. But marriage in particular, let's say for a young 
woman let's take that back actually to a young teenager growing up in UK or US mm -hmm. now from a young age we are encouraged to you know when you go to school when you go to your average kind of school state school you are encouraged to get an education so okay there's no contradiction there with Islam Islam says get an education as well that's good and that but then what's put I'm thinking back to the time when I had careers advice and um as a ex-high school teacher having worked in all girls schools and 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 well both both boys and girls mm -hmm. it's very clear that you're told as a young woman it's so important that you get your education you get your career and get having a family and getting married they are something way uh, out there in the horizon mm -hmm. till you know you're thinking when you're 30 that's you know, that's one possibility there. But the main push is you get your education, you work, you get your money, you get your foot on the property ladder. There are certain um, life goals that are given. Yeah. yeah, that are given to us. And so therefore we aim for them. And that now, the thing is, now again, even in Islam, having a job, that's not a problem. Having a career isn't a problem. But now the thing is that we're living in a capitalist economic system, aren't we? Where yeah. they the emphasis is on being a worker, earning money, and that will lead to happiness. So you get the car, the house, you know, the Instagrammable lifestyle, that's the goal. And marriage is really low down there because for, for your average kind of, you know, for, for in a secular society, you can, you, why do you need to get married? Just have a boyfriend or have right. a casual relationship. Mm -hmm. Or as you said, go on Tinder now, go on the apps and have a, have one night stands and hookups. Mm -hmm. You don't need, if you're feeling lonely, go and do that. Mm -hmm. You don't need a husband. Um, if you, because having a husband then comes with extra baggage. And why do you want to have that extra baggage when you can have a non-committal relationship, yeah? Mm -hmm. And your freedom is not being impeached. So if that's what, everyone is being taught for Muslim young Muslim women we're being taught that we were taught that and then you and it's that's the that's when we start having a have having a contradiction here and mm -hmm. we're thinking do what I don't and then okay so we're being taught that and th then added to that is well before you get married you need to fall in love you mm -hmm. you, you don't the way to get married is th this is the only kind of viable option given to us is and the best and the most beautiful option is you fall in love. Now, how are you going to fall in love? You're going to go on dates and you're going right. to get to know and you're going to be in private and you're going to do what happens in the rom-coms. You, you know, and again, there's then um, an alternative being given to us from mm -hmm. the Islamic view, because in Islam, we know we don't date, we don't meet in private, we don't, you know, sleep with our part, you know, our partner before we get to, you know, we marry them. Mm -hmm. So I think this is part of the confusion because I don't think we can underestimate the pull and the leverage and the influence of the culture, the secular, very liberal culture mm -hmm. that we're living in. I, I'm, I, and that was the thing that really got me thinking that for rather than, so what, we cannot blame young Muslims when they then go down that route because that's what they're constantly hearing and seeing. And my, inshallah, I, I hope Allah accepts my efforts that I wanted to really, well, let's stop and question this lifestyle that we are being presented as, as the dream, you know, dream, dream happy life that you'll have. Mm -hmm. Because our creator has a much better way, way of life give it for us are we going to stop and have a have a look at it, even give it a chance to be honest because i really do see a, um the islamic view of marriage the islamic way is getting a hammering it's get, it's got such bad publicity we can talk about the reasons why because the, and but the alternate the islamic alternative is being pushed aside and shunned and i really don't think we're giving it um, we're not giving it a chance and I think we should exactly well subhanallah there's so much to unpack <laughs> in all of this I think one thing um, you know when you're considering marriage uh, even like you're talking about uh, you know teens growing up all of the rhetoric that's coming at us what they see in the media what they're hearing from their teachers their mentors their friends and then I find oftentimes in their home, they're hearing something else, like 
you need to focus on marriage. And this creates this dichotomy and this cognitive dissonance that I think is really troubling for a lot of our young professionals who are at the stage where they would be considering marriage. That's where faith uh, can really help realign and kind of push out all those voices and bring clarity. So something that I think you've talked about is being God-centered and really being self-aware before you even start down that path once you know you're considering marriage. What is, a, you know, a tool that you have, you, you think, what are some of the steps you think people should take mm-hmm. once they do consider marriage to kind of find their own voice and kind of push those other voices out? Mm-hmm. Well, I would say that, so you're, you're at that stage where you want to f- find a husband. Number one, it has to start with dua. It it really does. You, we, dua is so um, taken for granted. I know I've taken it for granted, but if we, you know, when you want to do something, you want for the sake of Allah and you want to have a happy marriage, a tranquil marriage, you, it's the first thing is, is take a prayer mat out and you do dua to Allah sincerely that please Allah, because only with Allah's help can you achieve that goal because we can do there's so many there's lots of practical things I write in the book like there's loads of chapters about that but the first step always has to do the well and be very clear about our intention because as we know you know every action is will be judged by intention Mm -hmm. so those those um you know if we look at for example the in in our communities I'm, I'm Pakistani and um but having spoken to Somali sisters Reva sisters um, you know, Muslims from different countries, Arab sisters, they'll say that, you know, our communities and families, unfortunately, can make marriage quite difficult. And that's not a criticism of parents. It's just a, um, a reality check and, and an honest reflection that our families and our parents and us, we are not perfect. We are completely imperfect. And so sometimes we add nonsense into islam we make it we add barriers and, and and hurdles in the in in the way of something that is so simple in islam islam isn't the problem here islam isn't complicated you know the way to get married in islam is is very simple believe it or not but we as muslims we add again nonsense from other cultures right. so if, let's say for example you know we 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 allow racism to affect us so you know saying no he can only be of this um nationality of this caste even of this particular color and you just made it really hard for a young muslim who wants to get married and stay you know in, in this air, time of fitna someone who just wants to follow the sunnah you've just made it really hard for them mm-hmm. so i would say if we make our intention really clear that, okay, I want to marry a God-fearing, compatible husband and, and ask Allah sincerely, for, Allah will, uh, you know, uh, Allah wants to, us to do dua to him. You know, it's raining at the moment in the UK, you know, when it rains, it's a perfect time to do dua. There's lots of, I give a whole list of different times where you should do dua. But so number one, okay, do dua, make your intention very clear. Now, if you're slightly unsure well I'm not sure what my intent are my intentions right mm. are, am, am I are they slightly muddied well then that's where we then have to gain knowledge that about what did the prophet sallallahu alaihi say about marriage you know what does the quran say what you know what's the tafsir of those ayahs relating to marriage what would make a good husband or wife you know what examples of companions and spoiler like, there's so much out there um, and very detailed, not just general rules. So again, for your own sake, do that research before you do anything. Like don't jump into downloading the app and, t- and perfecting the selfie. Don't do that. Right. <laughs> just turn to Allah first, do your research, just as you would for any, you know, any life changing decision. And then you can say, okay. And then the next step really is, well, n- what do I, what type so would make me happy within these beautiful criteria that Allah's given me. And that's very personal to everyone. And why not? It should be personal. And you are not being picky or fussy. If you, you know, you should find them attractive. But that's in the sunnah. You know, you should know what your where you want to live. You know, what are your views on children? What are your life goals? What are your values? There's, again, this is something you should 
I would say take your time to figure out mm. there's no rush there's no don't let anyone push you into telling you no 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 you're you're getting old now get on with it no just take your time and figure it all out because then you won't waste your time and you won't make the mistakes and because you're very clear this is what will make me happy um inshallah that that would be my advice yeah oftentimes um we find like you said that cultural the family uh and even like the cultural society pressure to get married even before one is ready mm -hmm. uh and i know like when it comes to counseling or premarital counseling or premarital courses like even before you meet a a, a potential spouse the idea of just going to like a premarital course seems like a Western ideal, right? Um, so I think that it's it's interesting that you pr promote this. And mm -hmm. it's really, like you said, this journey of self-discovery and self-awareness to know oneself, your needs, your boundaries, so that you don't go into a, a marriage that will likely fail because you don't align on those things. So mm -hmm. when it comes to that journey of self-discovery, what are some practical resources, you know, some of our sisters and even some of our brothers out there could look at? Yeah, I, I'm so happy you mentioned pre-marriage. You know, it's interesting in Malaysia, a sister told me that they, if you want to get married, you have to have done a pre-marriage course, um, particular masjids, they won't marry you. They will not do the nikah until they have got spoken to the guy and the girl and got them to think about these things. And, and that scene, when I heard that, I thought that is the most sensible thing I have heard in a very long time. And, and it, it's, you know, um, preventative, isn't it? Because right. as, as you know, it, globally, the, the, well, in America, the divorce rate is last, last um, stats I looked at was 60%. And um, in the UK, it's 48%. And globally, I'm not sure, but it that doesn't, that's not a good sign. That and among Muslim couples, they, I've seen like recent research as well, and it's mm -hmm. just as high. We can't just say, oh, that's a non-Muslim problem. Exactly. Yeah, we really need to stop. Um, you know, I when I look at what's happening in wider society, we, as Muslims, we need to realize we live in wider society. We are part of the environment we're not separate it doesn't matter how much especially now with the internet it, you know what everyone else is doing our generation and the younger generations they are plugged into exactly that they are accessing and the ideas are and the um the, the behaviors we are following down that route and and that's the kind of thing that i think us, i want us to stop and put the brakes on to think about inshallah but um Yes, so going back to pre-marriage, it's interesting when I was looking at pre-marriage courses generally, um, the again, the stats were saying that people who do a pre-marriage course or reading, even it can be, you know, any kind of pre-marriage thinking and preparation. Mm -hmm. I know Catholics do this as well, just as an example. Right. The, the, the priest, they will meet with their priest. And, and again, that is makes so much sense to me. Now, so I'm thinking, you know, in our masjids, uh, Alhamdulillah, we have so many uh, and we spend so much money on our masjids, which is brilliant. We should. And, and every Jummah, everyone contributes and donates to masjids. Having pre-marriage courses organized by the masjids would be so useful for, you know, for the Ummah, you know, for the community, you know, local communities. And so, um, unfortunately, when I then looked at, so how many pre-marriage courses for Muslims, are there? Mm. There aren't that many. I'm sure, inshallah, there will, more will come. And I would advise wow. everyone to find out about them. But um, so one of the things, when I, as I was writing the book, I then thought, you know what, I think I'm going to do a pre-marriage course because purely because, you know, within the book, it's a, it, it would have gone to, oh my God, I had to put, you know, control myself. It's, exactly. It would have gone on to 500 pages and who reads a 500 page book? Nobody. Um, it was really just like overload. So I thought, let me put extra, add more information into a course, add more topics that maybe in the book I didn't think of at the time prior to publishing. But the whole purpose of pre-marriage advice is to really, it's to think about, well, why do I want to get married? Who would make me happy? 
what kind of questions do I need to ask? What mm -hmm. are my, who can I, there's, there's an interesting, who could I tolerate as far as what can I not tolerate? Mm -hmm. And be very clear, be really honest that I don't think I could tolerate a person that had, you know, who's extremely messy, say for example, mm -hmm. or, you know, some, or, or thinking through, well, what are my red flags or what are my red lines? So should I say, so for example, I won't accept, a, I don't want to be in a polygamous marriage. You know, someone, you might think, I don't want to say that in a meeting or in a discussion, but it's actually, you should say, if you don't want to do that, you should say so. Right. If you could not tolerate, if you, I'll tell you, I have a questionnaire on my website, smartmuslimer.com. And um, uh, sisters, I've had, uh, I, I was surprised. I was genuinely surprised by the number of women who, reply, who, fill, who fill in the question and send it to me regularly. Mm -hmm. And I asked them, what are your fears? Because... It, I, I was, sh I, I still am shocked that women are scared to get married, mm -hmm. that they, they are feeling fearful. And, you know, this is our sunnah, but women are fearful to fulfill a sunnah. And when they were giving their reasons, it was based on um, the, all, the, they've seen too many bad examples of bad marriages in Muslim communities. Mm -hmm. And I'm not, tarnishing um you know I, i'm not generalizing in the, these are specific like hundreds i'm not kidding hundreds of examples of things where women will say i can i trust them will they be too controlling will they um how do i know they're not going to lie to me and when i ask them well, that okay what's making you think this thing well examples ex my parents marriage um my friend's marriage the the very quick way people present one Islamic face to women mm -hmm. and I'm sure men women and men do this so I'm, I'm not um, tarnishing men here uh, it's um but then once they get married they flip right so how do you know they're not going to do that and then they don't see for example where marriages there were problems they don't see women getting the help whether it's again from masjids or from elders or from parents um and so therefore the so the pre if you do your pre-marriage thinking then you can be very clear about what I want what I'm you know it's interesting women are, are fearful of being too confident and I was thinking that isn't that should we that, that in itself what's wrong with being confident a man can be confident in Islam so can a woman mm -hmm. it, but women don't want to come across as too confident so I, again it's it's very interesting that if 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 you don't think about these things prior to getting married you can rush you you know there's women have the issue that we will get old and then the chances of having children decreases right. that, that's a fair women have or we can generally say that if women are over a certain age men don't want to consider women you know let's i'm just gonna say let's say 25 tw into the late in, into the 30s say and so again, women then feel, okay, I don't want to be left on the shelf. That, that's what they're saying. I don't want to right. um, be, not be able to have children. You know, they're, they're those issues. So they then will get married and think, okay, I'll get married to, to say, because I just don't want to end up being on my own. Mm -hmm. But then they marry the wrong person because they weren't compatible and then they get divorced. And, right. and again, that's, that's an even worse scenario to me in. Yeah, I mean, I think uh, you, you mentioned many gems in, in there. I think one thing that really stuck out to me is like, this is the, the, the fears that people have going into marriage, especially women. And in some cases, like it's because they've seen that or they've experienced that. And so it's almost like a chicken and the egg, because mm -hmm. one of the reasons we have this issue in our community is because there's a lack of premarital uh, understanding and learning. And what I love about what you're talking about with marriage is sunnah and connecting it to Islam and learning about the sunnah is something you mentioned. Men are men can be confident, but so can women in Islam. We have yeah. to learn our sunnah. We have to learn what is Islam and what is culture or politics or society. Mm -hmm. And then it goes into the self-awareness. I see oftentimes, like you, you mentioned, People get married to the wrong person because they overcompromised or they showed one face before marriage. And that comes down to a lack of self-awareness or honesty. If it's honesty, that's a bigger issue and you shouldn't be with that person. But it's a lack of self-awareness. That's where these counseling and courses come in. Mm -hmm. um, and 
I would also say that, you know, it's interesting that we are being told to, when it comes to marriage, that somehow flying solo is the solution lady would do so that you go and find the guy on your own you go and do it on your own you get to know him all on your own you don't even tell, tell don't get the parents involved why are you going to get your elders your welly your brother you do it all your own because you know what's best for you and what do what makes you feel happy and as long as you fancy the guy and he uh, you know, you've gone on 10, 20, 30 dates with him. That's enough. You know, he's told you he loves you. He's given you flowers and, and the rest of it. He's romanced you as, as if somehow that is going to help you find a compatible guy. And I think, first of all, if it was working so well, why is, uh, is the divorce rate so high? You know, and I don't say that as if, oh, aha, ha, look at these women, look at what the terrible situation they're getting. I feel really sorry for them that for them that is the only alternative for for, for uh you know uh, whether whatever religion you are the secular way of getting married is being pushed that's the only way and then what they have as well um it's interesting wendy shallot in her book return to modesty uh, outlined this in so i i she put it better than i can that she said that women are being pardon my language these are her words not mine she said that um Women who choose that they don't want, the, the virgins are being um, expected to act like prostitutes now. Women are expected, mm. that's it. Women are expected to behave like prostitutes, sorry. Mm. And the women who choose not to sleep around, they are being ostracized and being treated as if they are weird. That's, that's something odd with them. And you see, it's women are expected to sleep with a guy to then somehow, you know, get the guy. There's, there's a very interesting book called Get the Guy by, I've forgotten the guy's, he's a, he's a good life marriage guru kind of thing. And um, so women are told that the only way you're gonna get a guy is you, you know, do everything, look beautiful, look slim, go to bed with him. And then if you're lucky, he will propose to you and you might just get married. And so now let's now look at what does Islam give women instead? That for a woman, we're not, we are told, uh, and, and men, that, but a woman in particular, you have a wali and his job is to take care of you, protect your interests, not in a controlling, I'm going to, you know, you, I'm the puppet master and you will do everything I say. No, that's not actually the Islamic view. If you, when you study the role of a wali, he, he is there to talk, to find out, is, are, the, are the intentions of this guy honourable? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Are, is he decent? Is he, you know, if, if he's just after a physical relationship, then he can just sling his hook because I'm here to protect my daughter. You know, your brothers, your mother, your family, you meet, your families meet each other and you find out about them. And you, you know, you keep having that to and fro. When you're just speaking to someone and online is even scarier where mm -hmm. someone can be have a totally fake profile. They can pretend to be whoever they want. Mm -hmm. um, Whereas in Islam, you have that protection for you and they help you make that decision. Mm -hmm. uh, and again, we, you know, having an engagement, that's fine in Islam as well. But when you have the back, when, a, let's say, for example, when a man knows that the first thing he's going to have to do is speak to the father of the girl, he's going to have to go to the family. He's going to have to present himself. He can't just, um, you know, he's going to have to speak to her brother, speak to her uncles. And the men can figure out exactly what men are thinking. What, you know, as women, I'm not saying we're incapable, but they'll, just like women understand women better, we'll know what, you know, and we, we can go on there, you, you, you share each other's Instagram accounts and your social posts so you can see, okay, this is the type of person I'm marrying. That's what Islam gives us, rather than this, the version that we're being told is the, 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 the much more free version. Right. So... That is one thing that I would really say, again, in the pre-marriage, you know, making sure, even if you think your parents, and, and, and this is what's really interesting. I see in Muslim, um, in progressive kind of Muslim media outlets, like Muslim girl, and there are other ones like that, who they are encouraging Muslim girls to just, again, go solo and go in, and there's nothing wrong with so-called halal dating and the Muslim apps are great. And I just think that they are giving the worst possible advice to girls. It's exactly the same as what kind of teen Vogue gives to right. um, your, your average um, teenage girl in America or the US. Mm -hmm. And it is not good advice. 
No, I mean, and in your truth, you're you're exactly right. Like I grew up on like Sex in the City was really popular. And as a young teenager, I was like oh, really interested. What is that? You know, and so all of this messaging we have, it really does influence uh, how we're going about these things. What it, what really struck me is we're taking something that is sunnah, we're trying to do it in a way that is not sunnah. And so, you know, it's wonderful if if a sister has their family and the support of a wali. In some cases, people don't have a family that they see eye to eye with um, due to cultural differences, religious differences, um, anything like that. Like maybe they're practicing and their family isn't, uh, for example. So in those cases, you know, I think it's confusing because you have this idea that, yes, you can find what you need. And that's, I think, where that pre-marriage course maybe comes in and that Mm -hmm. self-awareness. But then you might not have that support system to do things exactly how the Sunnah outlines it. In those Mm -hmm. cases, what are some options uh, you think, like, how can we address mm-hmm. that group of people? Um, well, again, for, it has to start with dua, inshallah. If um, Allah can, is the the one who turns hearts. And mm-hmm. so in the Quran, it says, Allah, can, you know, Allah is the turner of hearts and can change people. So whenever we have any kind of challenge or problem, always ask Allah's help. <coughs> that, that would be the first thing. Then the second thing would be that... Um, um, if we look at, you know, um, life is not easy, you know, a marriage is one part of life and there will be ups and downs. It's what sometimes when we want, you know, sometimes we are tested and Allah tests us with things that the people that we love, you know, the things that we want, um, te- you know, we could be tested with happiness. And so I think to begin, we shouldn't begin a marriage journey thinking it's going to be plain sailing. I don't know anyone, I don't know if you do, Manira, that it was just like everything just fell into place like that. And, um, you know, so be prepared that, you know, you just be prepared that you're going to have rejections. They're going to be people that you'd like to marry and they say no. And yeah. there's some people, someone who really wants to marry you and you're thinking, no, I don't, I don't want to marry you. So we have to be really mature adults about this um it's not again this is where I think the rom-coms and the whole romance industry treats us like so it it makes us everyone so infantile Mm -hmm. and the um it's the whole you know fairy tale romance that that just just ignore that please because so be prepared it's going to be difficult but you know when you want something and it's difficult for you to get it when you finally get it and you have to work but you really appreciate it so I think you know subhanallah you've touched on so many points there's a plethora of variables that really influence this landscape and make it challenging really challenging for the typical teen and young adult to navigate you know even thinking and considering marriage so mm-hmm. i think you know your your points about returning to allah returning to the sunnah really taking that time for that journey of self-awareness mm-hmm. before you even get to the next step. I think those are great pieces of advice. Uh, your book, The Smart Single Muslima, correct? Mm-hmm. And I'm confusing your podcast and the book. Oh, I- <laughs> Smart Muslima podcast and uh-huh. this single smart Muslima book. Yeah, that's that. Yeah, smart single Muslima. I'm sorry. Yeah. Yes, okay. I-, I think these are great resources. You also have a pre-marriage course as well how can people find out about that well it's um the pre-marriage course for muslims that's on my website smart muslimer without a h um and um yeah it's it's all that you can you can (coughs) sorry the book you can purchase from amazon and the course you can purchase from my um from my website Okay, awesome. And when do you recommend people to take this? When they're first thinking about marriage or when they've met somebody? What's the point? I would, well, it's interesting. I think women are coming, purchasing it at different, whatever stage you are at, to be honest. But um, I I think, you know, that when it comes to life-changing decisions, we, so we're deciding which university to go to, we put a lot of thought into it. When we're choosing a career, we put a lot of thought of it, and rightly so. And so I'm, I'm advising everyone, marriage is such an important um, decision, you know, and it has to be rational. It cannot be emotional. 
please don't use your heart um, and your emotions and your and allow your hormones to be the deciding factor in this because they are unreliable. Yeah, you can just because you find someone attractive and, and they're cute and then said some nice things to you, you know, that's there. OK, that's fine. Then start to now turn your brain on and um, and start preparing and thinking. And it's and it's not um, that's the sensible thing to do. Don't it, I really don't believe love at first sight. Yeah, I don't believe in that. I really don't. Mm. As in, you know, and then you jump, you know, the whole Romeo and Juliet. It's weird. I teach Romeo and Juliet. And every time I teach it, I'm like, oh my God, <laughs> this is, and the me and the teenage kids, we have good discussions on that. It's quite interesting what they, uh, what they say. But, you know, it's funny. Did you know that it was Juliet who actually says to Romeo in the balcony scene, we're going to, um, we need to get married. She's the one who says, I'm not. First of all, you're not coming inside. That's that was sensible. And secondly, she says, "Okay, if you, uh, when are we going to get married? I don't know the exact words, but." Mm -hmm. And then he says, "Oh, okay, yeah, I'll meet you. We'll I'll arrange it with them." Um, Fire Lawrence, that's it. <laughs> so yeah, I'm just. It's really interesting that. So please don't take the emotion out of it and think because. I, I'm, I've, I know too many people who've got divorced. I think that's probably another reason why um, I wrote the book and did the course that if I just think, think of 10 people I know, five of them are now divorced and that's not good. And these were good, you know, these are, there's nothing bad. These aren't bad people. They really, I, if I were to break down, they didn't, they didn't do the pre-marriage thinking and, and preparation. If they had, they would have realized I should, we should never have got married. And that's not a bad thing. They would amount in the world. It was meant to be, you know, in this case. But they then, if, if, if doing pre-marriage thinking, it takes away the people you shouldn't marry. Mm -hmm. That's what's really good about it. you. Realize, oh, okay, I should not marry them for one, two, and three reasons. I'm going to move on. I'm not going to waste my time. Yeah, that's what I mean, it does. I would love to have you back for another session about when you meet potential partners and like the red flags and how do you know if it's a red flag or not or if they're over compromising because I think that's really what places a lot of our sisters and, and brothers in this experience where they have the right intentions sometimes they think they've done the right work and it's still not working out why and this is like detracting all their friends and themselves from remarrying or marrying so mm. it's perpetuating this problem so yes we need to have a follow-up, inshallah. inshallah. This is about considering marriage and the next step when you start meeting potential partners, maybe. Mm -hmm. Inshallah. <laughs> Excellent. So, I mean, Jazakal khair, sister Farhad. I, I really enjoyed this conversation. This is a huge topic to cover in our community, but a necessary one. This is the most wanted topic by all of our youth, like across the states, is about marriage and the complexities of navigating it all. So Jazak al khair, thank you for doing the work that you're doing. I think maybe you're an English teacher as well, if you're teaching Romeo and Juliet. Yes, I am. I'm a high school teacher and I, I teach at university level as well. Now it's Alhamdulillah, it's all online. Um, and um, I was just going to say, if anyone did want to get in touch, you know, they can, I'm on Instagram and um, my handle is Farhat Amin underscore UK. So if anyone had any, I, I do get a lot of questions on, on Instagram is probably the easiest place to find me. Excellent. Inshallah. So Instagram, Farhat Amin underscore UK. That's it. Yeah. Excellent. And your book, Single uh, Smart Single Muslima, and your blog is The Smart Muslima without an H. So yeah. please check out those resources. Um, I think, you know, they can definitely help you in, your journey wherever you are and if you're a brother listening out there these things are for you too you know i'm just saying go and check out what the sisters are learning and maybe that'll start some good conversations inshallah if you're thinking about marriage so jazak al khair once again Farhat. i really enjoyed this conversation to all of our listeners out there thank you for tuning in thank you for listening this is munira madison with the remastered podcast signing off until next time assalamu alaikum this episode is brought to you by the revolutionary Muslim matrimonial site, Half Our Deen, which uses science, not swipes, to help you find the other half. On Half Our Deen, you can learn about their personality, interests, and view up to 158 answers to marriage-related questions so you don't waste time with people that you're not compatible with. With over 2,500 success stories, Half Our Deen has quickly become the number one choice for marriage-minded Muslims.